What's up guys, welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can get data from a network request. So think about hitting an API and getting some JSON data back. This is a true fundamental of any app these days. Uh, something like Facebook or Instagram definitely need to be fetching data. So with that being said, make sure you hit that like button down below and let's get into it. So as always, we're going to start with an Xcode project. Single view app is cool. Let's call this uh, request. Make sure you have Swift selected as your language choice. Save the project. Hit Command R once it's ready. Make sure you have the correct simulator selected. And let's get into talking about what we need to get this working. So the first thing we need, of course, is a URL to actually get data from. Uh, and we also need a struct or a class to map the data to once we get it back from the URL. So what I actually have done is I've taken the liberty of finding you a URL that can get data for us, as well as creating a class so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me type it beforehand. So that's what I've pasted in. So let's actually go over this before we use it, because this is pretty important. So the first thing is a URL. So you'll see it's this API for a sunrise sunset service. And I've provided uh, some longitude latitude coordinates for New York. So if I actually take this URL, and let's say I open up uh, Safari and paste it on in, you'll see that some data is returned. Now it's not a, it's not pretty printed in a formatted way, but we inevitably do get data. So that's what the URL is. Uh, I'll also provide this in the, in the description below. The next thing we have are two structs, and these are important. So Swift provides a protocol known as Codable which is super powerful. And what that lets us do is it lets us convert data that we get back from a network call from a URL like this one you see above to an actual class or a struct with one line of code. And we can do that because of the codable protocol. So where did we get these types and these actual variable names from? So down here we see this comment. What you just saw in Safari, this is that exact same response it's just mapped and printed in a more legible format. And what we've done is we've created uh, structs with the same property values and keys, rather keys and types. So if we look here, this first one results, we have up here. And its type is something that we've called my result, which is another struct, which is a dictionary in this case. We also have this status, which is a string if you look here. Up here, this is also a string. And then we've done the same thing for this my result piece, which is all of the values, uh, rather all of the keys in here and all of the corresponding types of the value. So this would be a string, 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 integer, so on and so forth. So let's actually talk about making this network call now with this URL and how to convert the data, uh, aka the bytes that we get back to a uh, legible object in the language, which would be a struct in this case. So let's take this URL, let's put it in here, and let's create a function. We're going to call it, uh, let's call it get data from URL, and it's going to be a string. And what we're going to do for the purposes of this video is once we get some data back, we're going to print out some of the values if we're successfully able to convert that data to this object just print it out to our console so we can uh, exemplify that it is in fact working but we're going to basically call this function up here with the url and actually make the request in here so making the request is super simple in swift we're going to be utilizing the url session and we're going to do data task with url uh, we actually need the shared instance of the session, which is why it's not popping up. So now we're going to do data task with URL. Autocomplete decides to cooperate. We want URL with the completion handler. The URL will be a URL object with the URL parameter, which is a string. Don't forget to put an exclamation point here to unwrap this URL object. 
and this completion handler, we're going to get back data, a response, and an error. In here, we're going to make sure that the data is not nil and that the error is nil. In other words, the request exceeded. So we're going to say guard let data equals data and the error equals nil. Else, we're going to print out something went wrong and return. Now that we have data, uh, and hopefully we're all still compiling, looks like we have an error already. Let's see what we messed up. We have our URL, completion, uh, we need the in keyword. Cool, so now that we have the data, we now need to convert the data, which is bytes, to this object. Uh, and that's also known as JSON decoding. So the way we do that is we're going to create a variable called results, which is actually going to be this response optional. And we're going to say do catch. We're going to say result equals JSON decoder dot decode. And here we pass in this type dot self from the data. So this line is actually what's making all the magic happen of converting our bytes to this actual object down here that's codable. So we're essentially telling uh, the language to try to map the bytes in here to this object. And we're doing it in a try catch because we in fact do need to try it to do it. In other words, it might not be successful. And we're going to catch the error if one occurs. And we're just going to print it out for the sake of this demo. Now down here, we're going to say let JSON equals this result. In other words, if we've gotten this far, we now have our object, which is this type. So let's start printing some stuff out. So let's print out. Let's print out, let's see, JSON dot status. We have a status in here. Let's also print out the JSON results sunrise and sunset. Let's do results, sunset, results, solar noon. That's, I believe, a string as well. Correct, it's a string. So let's uh, don't not forget to do the most important thing is make sure you chain a dot resume after this. And this the actual function called resume is a little misleading because this call will make the actual request uh, kind of begin. This is what's going to fire the request. So what you can also do is assign this whole thing to a variable and come down here and say task dot resume. So we've created this URL session data task. We make sure that we're getting data back and the error is nil. We convert the data, which is bytes at this point, to the struct, and then we print out some of the values. So let's say command R to build and run this app and see what we get in our print statements down here. So it looks like we didn't hit any errors and we successfully got back OK, which is our status, the first thing that we're logging out. Sunrise, sunset, solar, noon. And if you actually come down here, you'll see that this all matches what we've got in our comment because I copy and pasted the result from Safari as we saw earlier. So yeah, that's basically how you get data from a uh, URL via a network call. So back in the day, several years ago, there used to be several libraries that used to help you do this exact thing. So Swift has come a very long way in terms of making this simple to do uh, and pretty elegant. It also makes it super simple to convert the bytes to these actual objects that you can use in your app more easily. So props to Apple and the team behind Swift for this. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new for daily Swift tutorials, and I'll catch you in the next video.